Hello students. I hope you and your family members are safe and in good health. These are testing times for all of us. Let's take this opportunity to spend quality time and indulge reading, which is becoming a dying hobby. Less screen time and more book time. What say? Let me introduce myself before we take a leap into the exciting world of social studies. I am Reema Odani and I will be guiding you through this exciting journey of social studies in Form 6. What you see on your screen is an introduction to the first chapter of Civics, Understanding Diversity. But let's look at what is Civics. Well, Civics is a subject that tells you how your country functions. It throws light on the role of government and the role of citizens. Let's understand what is civics. It is a study of citizenship. In fact, it tells us what citizens should do and what they shouldn't, like a rule book. It teaches us about the rights granted to citizens as well as their responsibilities. It also tells you who ensures that a country functions without any speed breakers. It is important to study civics as it makes sure that our society, our country provides a safe and a comfortable environment for people to live in. It will also outline how villages function, how cities are kept clean and looked after. As we progress, we will look at all of this in details. Here are some fun facts about the subject. Civics is the study of rights and duties of citizenship. The word civics was an American English invention. It is modeled on political science. Don't worry, it is a science, but it's not difficult to understand. It is derived from the Latin word civicus, which means of the citizen. And here's a fun fact. It is called Nagrik Shastra in Hindi. Why is civic education important? Successful democracies depend on the active participation of informed citizens. Civic education aims to inform and empower citizens to fulfill this role. The purpose of civic education is to encourage and empower us to understand our political environment and to actively participate in democratic processes. This is why civic education is also known as democracy education. Civic education provides us with knowledge. For example, knowledge about our rights and responsibilities as people and on the roles and functions of government institutions and parliament. This knowledge empowers us to claim our democratic rights as well as demand good democratic governance from our elected leaders. That means that civic education shows us what we can do to protect and support our democracy. We need to learn about our rights to be able to claim them for our benefit, as well as defend and use them responsibly. A lot of this information is laid out in our country's constitution. And Why do you think it is important to study civics? You must have seen your parents listening to political debates on news channels and discussing politics with their friends. Well, they are discussing because they want to separate facts from fiction. Sometimes what you hear and see may or may not be true. Hence, you need to study facts. You can only do that if you have a clear understanding of how things should work. Well, you will be eligible to vote in another five to six years. Here, civics will not only help you understand these speeches and discussions, but also as a future voter, help you make a fair decision. The civics you'll start with are stepping stones to a larger picture. Meaning, the chapters to come, we will study everything in detail. 
विद द हेल्प ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ सिविक्स यू विल बिकम अ मोर इंथोजियास्टिक वोटर अनादर फन फैक्ट बेंजामिन फ्रैंकलिन हु वॉज वन ऑफ द फाउंडिंग फादर्स ऑफ द यूनाइटेड स्टेटिका इज नोन एज द फादर ऑफ सिविक्स The overall objective of civic education is to promote active and responsible citizenship. Successful democracies critically depend on active citizens, people like you and me, upholding and claiming our rights. But active citizenship is not only about having rights. It is also about living up to our democratic responsibilities. For a democracy to function, It is the responsibility of people to monitor the performance of our government and hold political leaders accountable to fulfill their promises and to serve the people. If we see that things are going wrong, we can mobilize others in our community to raise awareness, change policies, or ensure that proper implementation of policies and the law occurs as it should. While the state is responsible for providing basic services, it is up to the people not to violate the rights of others let now that we are learning about diversity in our country it is important that we know some important things about our country here are some fun facts for you india is the world's largest democracy it means that the government in our country is for the people of the people and by the people we will learn about it in detail in the coming chapters another fun fact is india is the only country where different cultures castes religions and languages coexist india is a nation and also a subcontinent lastly india is asia's second largest country you will also be amazed to know that many philosophers and uh, life changers are born on this soil what is diversity diversity is the result of different cultures religions and lifestyles coming together in india each state has its own culture and traditions its own unique identity even though we come from different backgrounds we are all indians that's diversity the how the high mountain ranges vast seas large river irrigated lands countless rivers streams dark forests sandy deserts all these have adorned india with an exceptional diversity among the people there are numerous races castes creeds religions and language that is the me- meaning of unity and in diversity let me elaborate diversity means that we should acknowledge that each individual is different and respect the uniqueness for example you are different from your friends in many ways you may be good at something while your friends may excel at something else but your friends still adore you and recognize you for your uniqueness in respect of religion in india there is no end to its range india is a place of reunion of many religions and language languages of the world people from all around the world with different cultures are found living in a peaceful manner here the hindus the muslims the sikh the christians the jews the buddhists the jains and the parsis live along with each other they all celebrate religious festivals with great enthusiasm now you must have a question in your mind what does diversity add to our life the obvious answer here would be that diversity adds variety to our life Let me explain this with a very simple example. I'm sure all of you love ice creams. Now imagine that you went to a ice cream vendor and you asked him for an ice cream. He gave you a vanilla ice cream. But you wanted to know whether there are other options available or not. To your disappointment, the shopkeeper told you that only vanilla ice cream is available. 
won't you be disappointed won't you uh, get bored of eating the same ice cream again the same applies to diversity diversity adds a lot of excitement happiness to our life it helps us understand uh, our surroundings it tells us many things we didn't know about it it informs us of the things that we didn't know existed that is what diversity adds to our life let's understand how diversity originated in olden days people didn't have many means to travel they traveled by different means of transport like the sea route by road on horses and camels the reason they traveled are very similar to our present era for example you must have heard that people travel overseas for jobs to survive nat- natural disasters explore new fl- uh, places and for a better future now since people travel from one place to another they also took with themselves their own culture and traditions so they did adapt themselves with the physical surroundings but still kept their traditions and culture alive One such example that I can give you right now is that of Parsis. They migrated from Iran and settled in the coastal towns of Gujarat and Maharashtra. They still follow the ancient religious beliefs and have adapted to the physical surroundings. Their language, food, lifestyle is influenced by both Gujarat and Maharashtra. That's diversity. like in the previous slide i had given you the example of parsis another example i can cite here are that of indian settling abroad they have adjusted very well to foreign land but they have not forgotten their culture and religion they have also built temples mosques gurudwaras on foreign soil they have mixed with the new environment like sugar melts in milk so we can say that diversity is a result of migration when people migrate they adapt themselves with geographical area in which they live they they adapt their food habits their lifestyle their clothing and their occupation to their physical surroundings so in short we can say that diversification is the result of diverse occupations intermixing of cultures and diverse religions so we can conclude that both historical and geographical factors influence the diversity of a region the diversity in india is unique being a large country with large population India presents endless varieties of physical features and cultural patterns. It is the land of many languages. It is only in India people uh, have accepted all major religions of the world. In short, India is the epitome of the world. The vast population is composed of people having diverse creeds, customs and colors. Let's take the example of two beautiful places in India that is Kerala in the south and Ladakh in the north of India. Let's understand these two places which will give us a clear understanding of diversity. Let's take Ladakh first. Ladakh is a union territory and it forms a part of the larger region of Kashmir. Now you all know that Ladakh is a desert meaning it is an arid zone uh, agriculture is not possible in this area and it is in the eastern part of Jammu and Kashmir Now since it gets very little rainfall people can't farm there and it is covered in snow for a large part of the year The source of water that people get is from the melting snow during the summer People of Ladakh they rear sheep and most of them are shepherds from this sheep they produce a very expensive wool which is the pashmina wool i think your mothers will probably know what pashmina shawls are 
pashmina wool shawls are woven and it is sold to the traders and it is a speciality of kashmir they are very very expensive like i have told you and it is a unique product of ladakh let's understand the dietary preference of the people of ladakh like in the slide you see the picture of cheese people of ladakh eat meat and milk products like cheese and butter each family owns some goats cows and yak cows you can see the picture on your right hand side that is a yak cow the two religions that the people of ladakh follow are buddhism and islam did you know that ladakh was considered a good trade route as it had many passes through which caravans traveled to what is today called tibet these caravans carried textiles and spices raw silk and carpets being located on a strategic location ladakh apart from being served as a trade route it was also used by different sections of the society to serve their different purpose like it was served as a channel to carry buddhist art from india to central asia and other centers on the silk routes well that's the end of part 1 we will discuss kerala in detail in part 2 of this chapter till then stay tuned and keep on reading